Time now to go around the horn with Ryan Shumpert as Tennessee wins another series as they take care of business in College Station against Texas A&M. Uh, Ryan, let's talk a little bit about the Volunteers. Uh, on a doubleheader on Saturday, they, they jump out of the gates early for a 6-1 win, disappointing in game two, and then just exploded to close out the series and get on the plane and come back to the house. Yeah, you got to the Sunday game and you had Blade Tidwell rolling there through four innings and then runs into a bunch of trouble in the fifth and Tennessee blows the four run lead and it's kind of a little bit of a here you go again but luckily for Tennessee they had a full second half of the game instead of just two innings to get things fixed and boy did they the bullpen steadied out enough and the offense just like you said exploded to an incredible finish I mean I really thought it was a really strong weekend for the offense overall but Certainly an explanation point on it when you put up 20 in the Sunday game and 15 in the last uh, last four innings and eight, I guess it was, in the ninth inning that really uh, put things out of reach for AM in the ninth. Big picture here. Uh, I want to ask this question because I'm sitting here looking at Tennessee's 12 and six in SEC play, one game out of uh, first in, in the SEC East behind Vanderbilt. And I'm sitting here looking and I'm thinking back to that Georgia game on Saturday, had that one won. Florida at home, they had that one won. A&M, they looked like they were in control in the Saturday game there. And so I, you can look at it one of two ways. Like, wow, that, boy, they blew those games. Or you can look at it and go, man, they, they've been really good with the exception of a handful of bad pitches on three weekends and Saturdays. They've been as good as anybody in this league when you look at it overall. Yeah, they have. And I think that's a good point. I'm glad you brought it up because it kind of goes into something that wasn't going to make the cut in 3-2-1 this week. And that's the defense. It hasn't been as good as I guess it was in 2019. It hasn't been as good as it was kind of for a stretch in there in the season. Georgia series is a perfect example. Cut two, scuff balls, you lose the chance. Vanderbilt last weekend, they things kind of escalated on them when they made a few defensive mistakes. And then I don't think there were any errors in that seventh inning against Texas A&M. But Kyle Booker overthrows the ball, doesn't play a ball well. Saw a couple of times today in that fifth inning, Pavloni got crossed up. So Tennessee just hasn't been as crisp defensively, and I think that has led to some uh, missed opportunities for a team that, like you said, could easily have three more wins in SEC play and has really just missed a couple opportunities. They haven't played, I guess you'd say, the Vanderbilt game on Sunday. It's the only game they've really played that bad. And other than that, they've just given a few away. But I think at the same time, it cancels it out. This team's won a lot of close games. They've won in come from behind fashion. They've won games they probably shouldn't have won in SEC play. So it is easy to look at and say, man, that's just a few little things. It shouldn't be that hard to clean up and you have three more wins. But when you've won so many crazy games and come from behind fashion, I guess it's it's kind of due to drop a few that way as well. That's a great point. You know, baseball, they say the length of a season, everything evens itself out. That's probably the case with this team. But I do think you're talking about that when, when Tony Vitello is talking about playing your best baseball at the end of the year. When you look at this team, I think that's the thing he's probably talking about the most. Just be really sound behind the pitching but because they're going to throw strikes. You just can't make those mistakes. It's, it's not about all of a sudden they got to find – some great, you know, mystery, unlock some mystery at the plate. It's just be sound behind him. Don't you think that's what he's kind of implying when he keeps talking about, you know, you want to be playing your best and we're not playing our best. We got to play our best at the end of the year. Yeah, I think that's, I think it's twofold. I think that's a really big part of it. Just playing, throwing strikes, not giving teams anything easy and then playing good defense behind them. Cause that's what this team prides itself on playing good defense and throwing strikes number, not just pitching. That's the number one thing this team prides itself on this program prides itself on. I think the other thing, which you saw this weekend, is just having not having no production from some of your big guys in the offense. You don't have to have those guys go up and hit 300 every week and be spectacular, but he talks about it all the time. Just be yourself. Be comfortable in the situation. Don't try to do too much. And this weekend, you saw basically everyone for Tennessee give them something, have a solid weekend play. Not everyone was stars. There were, Jake Rucker was incredible. Evan Russell was incredible again. But top to bottom, Tennessee got production from everybody in its lineup, and that Hasn't been the case a lot of times this year. And I think when Vitello is talking about playing their best baseball, I think it's just getting everyone in the lineup to do what they're capable of and, and not too much. And that's exactly what you saw in College Station. And I wonder if this gets Jake Rucker really going. We talked a little bit last week about the, how the middle of the order for Tennessee has got to step up and, and get it going. I've got him at 9 and nine of 14 at the plate, uh, multi-hit games, all three games this weekend obviously saw the baseball really well, hit for power, hit for extra base hits, 
you know, just kind of did everything at the plate. You wonder if that gets him going. And if it does, then that does change the offensive complexion as well as this team suddenly finding the long ball. I mean, this was not a home run hitting baseball team early in the year, but boy, they have found power the last couple three weekends. If Rucker can hit for power and hit with some consistency and they get the long ball with some stuff, they have a chance to put big innings up. I'm not saying they're going to put 20 runs on, on the board for every game, but they do suddenly have a chance to be a more explosive offense than that little bit of small ball, if you will, you know, kind of grind out a run. Yeah, and I think that goes perfectly into the point I was just making. Connor Pavloni and Max Ferguson, those are two preseason All-Americans. They had one home run entering three weekends ago combined, and they I think they've had five now in SEC play the last three weekends, six actually in SEC play the last few weekends. Obviously, Evan Russell hitting six home runs in two weekends goes a long way to that too. But it's just getting some more production from guys they knew they could get it from. And then on Rucker, I mean, he was just spectacular this weekend. Three three-hit games, five extra base hits, and then he had – in that middle game on uh, on Saturday, he had a hit that he just wrote down the line. The third baseman made a great leaping catch. That probably would have been another double. So he was all over it all weekend. He's quietly really been really solid for Tennessee all season. He hasn't had the power. He'd had, like you mentioned, a, a few kind of rough weeks going into this weekend. And the power is what he really hadn't had all year. But he's been over about 325 all season. He's been pretty consistent for this team. And I think you saw him kind of take it to another level this weekend at, at Texas A&M. And I got to say this, I guess, I guess Tennessee doesn't have to look for another baseball coach. I think Tony Vitello said when asked about his team being ready to, to be handled, as, could, they be, could they handle being the hunted? He said, if we can't, then somebody else needs to be leading this program. I don't think you have to worry about that because this team was ready to play from the first pitch, even though they had the weather delay on Friday and as it kind of messes all your rhythm up everything. They were ready to go. I know they didn't get to sweep, but they were ready to go and really jumped on the Aggies early. Yeah, they did. They scored multiple runs in the first inning of both game one and game two. And then a &M got the home run in uh, Sunday's game to start things out. And, but Tennessee's offense didn't score the first two innings, but jumped on him in the third with a four piece and really took a felt like a steady lead in the game, not a massive lead. Obviously, they gave that up. But they the offense was consistent, really. I guess a few innings, bullpen a and bullpen shut him down in that second game in a series. But really, the whole consistency through the weekend, Tennessee's offense was ready to hit. They were very productive. And then at the, at the mound, on the mound, Tennessee's starting pitching was overall solid. Bullpen had some shakiness. But uh, this weekend, we've seen it plenty of times the past few years, the pitching pick up the, or pick up the offense. This weekend was kind of the opposite with the offense picking up the pitching. Is the bullpen thing – concerning I know Tony Vitello's talked about looking for another arm a little more help you know from middle relief and even ending relief obviously uh, Redmond Walsh is, is not a factor at this point where, where is this bullpen how concerning is this bullpen to you when you talk about regional play where you might play five games super regional with so much on the line moving forward how concerning is this bullpen for you I'd say it's a little bit concerning at this point. I hadn't been overly concerned, but I think what's been able to keep this bullpen so steady is that they've had, for most of the two guys, it was Hunt Walsh, then it kind of turned into Hunley and Kitchens has had two pretty bad outings. Hunley hasn't been quite dominant. When you're only pitching five guys, when two of them are dominant, can give you four, three, five, three to five innings in a weekend, you can get by with using the five. They haven't had that dominance. And I was kind of surprised. We talked about it on the preview. I was surprised Tennessee didn't go to more guys this weekend, especially in the night spinning on Sunday. They had whatever it was, 13 run lead. And they kept for Edmund Walsh in there the last inning. And I get some of that building confidence for ready to get the Jason Rackers, um, Connor Housley, Will Mabry, any of those guys more action. And I, I think you really do have to – we've talked about it on here. I think you have to expand it a little more. And it becomes a little bit more worrisome when the top guys aren't as productive as they've been uh, for most of the season. So Tennessee does what they need to do on the road. They win the series. They wanted the sweep, but you got to win that series if you're going to contend for the, the Eastern Division title. Things get a little tight for Vanderbilt, who had a good weekend, by the way, taking two of three from Mississippi State, which is State's a good baseball team over in the Western Division. Tennessee gets Kentucky next, then Missouri. The road for Tennessee 
Ryan appears to be really nice in front of them, a little more challenging for Vanderbilt out there. And again, I think the biggest takeaway is that Tennessee handled themselves the way that you need them to handle themselves if they're going to line up and and they're going to beat teams and have a chance to, to you know, to win the Eastern Division or, or host a regional. This was a big weekend for me because they're coming off all the emotions of the last two weeks. Could they do it? They did it. And I think that's a big, that's a nice step forward and the continued growth and development of Tony Vitello's program. I'm not saying it's a surprise they did it, but I thought it was a needed step to show where this program's at. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, definitely. I agree. And the fact, the way they responded, it seemed Sunday they lost that lead. It seemed like things could have spiraled on him. The guy that was in, I'm going blank on his name for a and that was had been pitching a few innings in the bullpen was really sitting them down, was really effective. They were able to get two hits off of him, get him out of the game. And then from there, the offense just exploded. On the SEC picture, you mentioned it. Good weekend for Vanderbilt, getting two out of three over Mississippi State. Besides that, Florida wasn't able to sweep Auburn, who's one of the worst teams in the league. And, or excuse me, South Carolina drops the series to Arkansas. No surprise there. So besides that, some good things happened for Tennessee. And one thing I want to mention on the way out is just to shout out Connor Pavloni, because we mentioned it. We thought he would play this weekend. A full, one week after taking 95 off the hand, he started two games. And he started, he played 27 innings behind the plate in about 26 hours. That's impressive if you aren't dealing with anything else. The fact that you throw in, he was coming off an injury off of that and was pretty productive doing it at the plate and behind the plate. Just a really, really impressive toughness and a really good weekend for Pavaloni. That's a great point. I'm glad you mentioned that as we head out the door because that epitomizes kind of what this Tennessee baseball team is and, and kind of what Tony Vitello wants his program to be. And, and it certainly um, that there's a, a, a picture of that with, with what uh, he did behind the plate and at the plate this weekend. All right, that's going to do it for Around the Horn. We got the three, two, one coming up tomorrow. We'll continue to cover this hot baseball team as Kentucky is up next for Tennessee um, in, a, in a three-game set as the SEC stretch run continues for the Volunteers and a wild race in the SEC. For Ryan Shumpert, I'm Brent Hubbs. Thanks for joining us. Have a great rest of your Sunday, everybody.